grumbling and all that stuff after a while. I know you kind of cut me off if I don't uh, if I don't get it where you can just pay attention to it without it blasting your ears and stuff. You know, uh, wow, wasn't that good? Wasn't that good? I tell you, you don't know. Uh, it's kind of nerve wracking having to get up there, like just starting off and. Of course, I screwed that first song up. They were trying to play it right, and I was playing it the wrong way. But that's kind of nerve-wracking to get up and, and to do that. But I feel a whole lot more relaxed about bringing God's Word to you right now than I do about playing the guitar and singing and all that kind of stuff because I know that this right here don't have nothing to do with me. This is just about lifting Jesus up. And I'm not going to keep you too long because I know that uh, we're ready to go eat ice cream and we're going to watch the, the fireworks, and we've got a heck of a display for you. And it's going to be good, and it's going to be good. You guys on the front row, y'all are in, in hazard's way because I spit a whole bunch when I talk and sing, so y'all liable to get a good shower before I'm done. But uh, for the last two weeks, not this week, but the last two weeks, I've been at camps. I've been at youth camp and then the children's camp, and I've been uh, just hanging out with kids and youth for, for all that time talking to them. And uh, I'm finding out that they've got a lot of questions. A lot of people have questions about just exactly what this salvation thing is. We got all these church words, you see, that we use. All these things like put your faith in Jesus and, and trust in Him and giving Him your life and all these kind of church words. And I'm going to break all that down for you tonight. I'm going to get rid of all the, all the churchy talk. And I'm going to tell you exactly what you need to know about what salvation is, okay? So when you leave here tonight, I don't know what you come for. And you may have, you may have probably messed up coming because when you leave tonight, you won't have no doubt in your mind what salvation is, what, what it does to you, and what, it, what its effect is in your life, okay? Y'all ready? ready? Are y'all with me? Yeah. All right, the first, the first ten rows are with me, okay? I got, uh, it's dark in here, so I didn't figure you'd bring your Bible, so I put the scripture that I'm going to use up on the screen so y'all can just look at it. Ain't no pretty background for you to stare at either. I made that mistake before. I put, like, waves and stuff back here, and people was watching the waves and not listening to me. So I got just the black background and the scripture up there. Let me set it up for you. This is, I was looking for a place where Jesus described what salvation is without no, I mean, you can't, it's no doubt in your mind that what he was saying when he got through with this right here. Okay, let me set it up for you. This is Matthew chapter 11, 25 through 30, and it's that verse that you've all heard. We've all, you've probably heard a million sermons on it. It's the one that says, come to me, all you are heavy laden and weary, and I'll give you rest, and you'll find rest for your souls. You've heard that verse a million times. But I want to set it up for you. Jesus is talking to a bunch of people here, and he's talking right before this verse. He's talking about these cities that he went and he ministered in, and he performed healings in, and he preached in, and he's saying, look, all these things that I did in you, these cities, he said, and you didn't repent, you didn't turn to me, you didn't put your faith in me, you didn't trust me. I went to Chorazin as one of the cities, and that's just, a, just one, one of the cities back there that he went to, ministered in, healed people. And he said, if I would have done the works in you, that in, if I would have done those works in one of those evil Old Testament cities, they would have repented, but you didn't repent. And then he went to another city, and he said, and I went to this city, and they didn't repent. And they, they saw my works, they saw my miracles, they saw all the things that I did. And if I would have did those works in Sodom and Gomorrah, they would have repented, but you didn't. So he's saying, he's setting all this up by telling all about these cities that he went to, ministered in, and they didn't repent. They didn't have nothing to do with him. They didn't care about his message. They didn't care about anything that he's done. And he says this right here. This is the next sentence. He says, at this time, Jesus answered and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent and hast revealed them to the babes. Now, I'm going to let Jesus himself tell you exactly what the, the points that I'm going to be telling you are coming right out of his mouth. So there ain't going to be no, well, I'm not sure he interpreted that right. I'm not sure that I read it that way. You won't have no doubt because it's coming right out of his mouth. The first, there's six things that you have to know before you leave here about salvation. And I talk fast. If you listen fast, we'll get done fast. Okay? There's six things you got to know. First thing you got to know is salvation is hidden from the wise and prudent. That's something you don't hear every day, isn't it? Something you don't hear every day. Now, I don't mean God don't want all people to be saved. God's not calling all people, wooing all people. That's not what I mean. But the wise and the prudent, the Pharisees, you remember that word from the Bible? Prudent means intelligent. So the wise and the prudent, it's hidden from. Salvation is hidden from some, some folks. I want you to understand that with the youth that I pastor here at this church, my greatest fear, I mean my greatest fear for them, is that they'll grow up and start getting wise. That they'll grow up, and you know, and we all do it. We'll look around us, 
You know, right now, young people, they, uh, I mean, they are ideological. They, they know right from wrong. They see, they can tell bull from a mile away. So you guys that are parents like me, you can't, you can't snow them. They know what's going on. And my greatest fear is that they'll graduate high school, go to college, go to work, whatever, and they'll look around in some church somewhere, wherever they're at, way far off. They'll look around at a bunch of different places, and they'll not see anybody who's living for Christ. Not see anybody. They'll see a lot of people putting on suits and ties and going to church. They'll see a lot of people just miserable as they can be. They'll see a lot of people that don't hate sin, that don't try to live for God. They'll just see all this, and guess what? When you get 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, you start looking around and going, you know what? That just must be the way it is. Because everybody's like that. I'm looking around, and I'm not saying there aren't anybody living for God, but I'm saying that they're few and far between. If you look around, look around you. That light's blind to me. I'm going to come stand up here. They're going to they're gonna look around and not see anybody. And they're going to say, you know what? I think that's the way it is. That must be the way it is. So guess what? If so-and-so is going to heaven, I must be okay too because I'm better than him. Man, you ever thought that way? You ever heard somebody think that way? That is so dangerous because guess what? If you say, look, br Brother Jason did that, so if he's going to heaven, I'm, guess what? Brother Jason might not be going to heaven. I mean, far as you know, far as you know, I might not. I mean, it don't make no, preaching don't make no difference. Singing don't make no difference. It's trusting in Jesus that makes a difference, okay? So I might, that's my greatest fear. I want you to understand, you got to know. I mean, when you look around, and let's just take it from a statistical point of view, okay? 97% of the people in America believe in God, or say they do. 80% of those people are say that they're Christians. I mean, America is the most godless country in, on the face of the planet, but we all Christians, right? We all claim the name of Jesus. Now, that's just statistics. And if you look at it, I can prove to you on paper that the divorce rate is same in the church as it is out of the church. That premarital sex is the same in the church as it is out of the church. That domestic violence cases are the same in the church as out of the church. So when you look around, guess what? The church don't look no different than the world. So I, my greatest fear is that young people will grow up and they'll look at all this mess and they'll say, that just must be the way it is. I want you to know tonight that that's not the way it is because salvation is hidden from a whole bunch of folks. Now, Jesus had in mind the religious folks when he was talking about this, the Pharisees, the people who said, you know what, I got it going on. I got it all going on, and I know a bunch of people like that, and I know that you do. I'm going to tell you something. I used to be one. I used to sit on the third row of a church, and I was just as lost. I used to play guitars and bars for a living, and I was lost doing that. And then when I quit that and got in church, I was just as lost on the third row of the church as I was in the bars when I was playing. I want you to understand that salvation is hidden from some folks. You ain't never thought of it that way, have you? It's hidden. It's hidden because the heart's hard. It's hidden because they won't come in humble faith. It's hidden because they're wise and prudent. Salvation is hidden from some, some folks. But don't worry. Look at the next one. The next point Jesus makes is salvation is revealed to the babies, to the babies. The word is actually infants. To the babies. It's revealed to the babies. Now, he's talking about salvation. He's talking about responding in repentance. He's talking about all these cities that didn't repent, that didn't turn to him, that didn't come to him in faith. He's saying, thank you, God, that you've hid these things from the wise, but you've revealed them to the babies. You know what it's like to come? I think it's Matthew. I got it wrote down right here. It says, it's, it's Mark 10, 15. It says, Verily I say unto you that whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child, he shall not enter therein. Babies. You know how a baby comes? I, I think of my little kids. I got, I got an 8-year-old and a 5-year-old, and I got one on the way. And you know how a kid comes to you? Like daddy or uncle or granddaddy or something. You know how he comes to you? He don't come to you like, I've seen a lot of people walk an aisle and they're like, well, I'm coming and I'm going to make my profession now. And Jesus is just, boy, he's just lucky to have me. And I'm just going to be such a blessing and it's going to all work out. And I, I'm coming to join this social organization that we call the church here. And it's going to be great and pleased to meet you. Uh, that's not a way to come to God. You come to God like a child comes to his daddy. He's like, I ain't got nothing. I ain't got nothing, God. You're going to have to feed me. You're going to have to clothe me. You're going to have, I'm depending on you for everything. I'm depending on you for my, the air I breathe. I'm depending on you for the way I walk. I'm I don't have nothing. I can't feed myself. I can't do nothing for myself. God, please help me. I'm lost and I'm, I'm undone and I need your salvation. I need you. That's how a child 
comes. That's how a childlike faith comes. And let me tell you something else. That the most disturbing verse, one of the most, to me in the Bible, and I'm trying to hurry, is that Matthew 23, 37, I believe it is. And it says, Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. Jesus is walking away from the temple. And he said, Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you that kill those, kill the prophets and stone those sent to you, how I long to gather, listen, your children. 